One of the interesting things that's happened lately is you can now build a virtual cloud. And we're gonna talk about what that means, but this next company, vSider, lets you build your own virtual cloud that spans over Amazon and Rackspace and other cloud providers and does all sorts of things like smart failovers. And we're gonna t get geeky right now. Who are you? Hi, Robert. My name is Chris Marino, and I'm the co-founder of vSider. Uh, prior to vSider, I was running an open source uh, software company, and then prior to that, I was uh, the founder and CEO of another uh, cloud networking company called uh, Resonate. And then prior to that, I was a student and doing all sorts of nerdy engineering things. Very cool. So what's happening in the world? Uh, you know, we, we hear these terms like virtual private cloud. What is that, and why does the world need that? And then how do you fit into this new world? Sure. Well, virtual private cloud is a fairly new idea that is starting to get a lot of people interested because it solves a lot of the problems when they try to deploy to the cloud. A virtual private cloud, in very simple terms, is a way in which you can carve out parts of the public cloud infrastructure and call it your own. That means What that means by that is that you can um, uh, build your own private networks inside of that and secure it as though it were an extension of your internal enterprise uh, lands, enterprise okay. networks. Virtual private cloud is your private area of the public cloud. Okay. And so how do you guys fit into this? Sure. So vSider is a solution that lets you connect and network and secure all of your cloud resources as though they were inside of your enterprise data center. And it does that by extending the security perimeter from your enterprise data center out into the public cloud, across Amazon, into Rackspace, over to GoGrid, or wherever the resources might be located. Okay. So it does that by carving out what we call virtual private cloud. And then within that, you can build and secure your own private networks and attach them to your enterprise data center. Now, that's a really important thing for people that want to um, move out to the cloud, but they don't need a public-facing web application, for example. They just want to uh, deploy systems and resources using the economics of the public cloud, but um, uh, uh, make it uh, an extension of their existing data center. And why would a company do this? So it, it, you know, if you're a big bank or a big, big uh, manufacturing company or something, why would you do this? What, well, what's the, the drivers? Uh, well, clearly the economics of this are quite compelling. When you just do some very simple arithmetic with respect to the cost of running servers in Rackspace, servers of storage and databases within Rackspace versus the cost and expense of running them and maintaining them internal. So the economics of the public cloud are, are pretty overwhelming specifically with respect to the, uh, the elastic nature of them. So for example, if you've got a dynamic application that changes load over the time of day or the time of month, uh, the economics are very straightforward. If you can rent those machines by the hour in rack space versus having them dedicated on premise, the payback is you know, very, very quick. So that's just, just general cloud economics. But in order to take advantage of that, you still want the security and the connectivity that you're familiar with inside your data center. And that's where the idea of a virtual private cloud get, becomes important, because uh, these are some of the hurdles that people need to overcome to really take advantage of the public cloud. Now, why do, if a CTO at a company decides to do this, why do they need vSider? Why can't they do it themselves? Yes, well, the cloud's network is primitive by anyone's standards. If you go to Amazon or Rackspace, Rackspace is, is noticeably better than, than Amazon's, but let's talk about Amazon's for a moment. Amazon requires or provides what's known as layer three networking, and layer three networking works just fine. Machines can talk to one another. But when you go inside the data center, layer three networking is really the minority. Most of it's done at uh, what's known as layer two networking or switching. So you've got all these enterprise applications that have been built that rely upon layer two networking, and you can't use Amazon. You just cannot use Amazon. You can use Rackspace for certain cases. So this is one of the reasons why they might choose a solution like vSider, because within that virtual private cloud that I described, we also allow you to build a virtual network. And that virtual network brings in the layer two connectivity that is standard within the enterprise data center. So for that reason, people that want to deploy enterprise applications in the public cloud are prevented from doing so because the networking just doesn't support it. Whereas a solution like ours can bring that capability to the public cloud so they can bring clustered applications or applications that require uh, failover or broadcast. or These are kind of geeky sort of networking terms. But uh, inside the data center, it's commonplace for applications to require this. 
and they've been prevented from going to the public cloud until they have a solution that provides that. Yeah, this lets you, what, uh, obfuscate which uh, cloud provider your virtual network is built on? It does, it, it does that as well. So, the fact that you can, as I said, extend the perimeter, logically extend the perimeter of your data center out into the public cloud, and that can go from Amazon to Rackspace to GoGrid or whoever. Once you've do done that, you can build your own network in that virtual private cloud. And then once you've had that network out there, it, you don't know it's on Amazon. You don't know it's on GoGrid because you can use your own private IP addresses. So this is, again, very geeky. So you can use a, a private, private non-routable IP address like a 10 dot block or a 192 dot block. If you set up your own LAN, you know there's a 192 there or a 10 dot, right? Those are your private IP addresses. Yep. Well, then w with a virtual network like v that Vsider can provide, you can deploy those private uh, addresses into the public cloud. And that's something you couldn't do otherwise. So with that, you could have a machine that's running at Rackspace with an IP address that's sequentially uh, from, sequential from an, uh, a machine that's running in Amazon. Yeah. So you can build a network that is contiguous in, this, in, the, in the IP address range, yet it spans all of your providers. And again, it abstracts that. As you said, it abstracts the, uh, the network that you control from the network that's physically connecting the systems. Can it also connect uh, to internal servers that are running, let's say, OpenStack? Absolutely. So OpenStack, as you, your listeners, viewers might be uh, aware, is the open source version of a cloud orchestration solution. It's very popular. Rackspace is a big contributor, obviously. Uh, so OpenStack actually has three modules. There's a compute module, a storage module, and there's a new advanced one that's focused on the networking problems of OpenStack. It's called Quantum. So uh, there's, uh, we're working toward uh, uh, being comp more integrated with Quantum today, but the problems that Quantum is trying to address with an OpenStack are exactly the kind of problems that vCider can provide. The important difference is that when you deploy an OpenStack solution, you're deploying it within your data center. Yep. And the, the, the issue here is people want to mix and match data centers and service providers. So in that sense, it's not something you'd find out of the box from OpenStack. Yep. How do, you, how do you guys get paid then? So yes. if you move to this virtual private cloud with vSider, what? Right, so our solution is an on-demand service offering. So you go to our site, vSider.com, you sign up for an account, my.vSider, and f with that, you, can, uh, you have to download a little piece of software, and then you load that software on all the machines that you want to participate in this network. And uh, then those machines wake up, they register, they download a configuration table, and then those the machines all communicate directly, not involving our, our configuration portal. But from that perspective, it's an on-demand SaaS model of a network overlay function. Yep. Can you make these uh, networks more resilient than they otherwise would be? For instance, if Amazon goes down or Rackspace goes down, what, what do you guys do to make it more resilient and exactly. make sure that the network never goes down? Exactly. So. Um, Inside the data center, there, there are many sophisticated high availability techniques for application failover and um, uh, cluster technologies and so forth. And that's built into the applications like you know, SQL Server and Linux HA and Oracle Rack, there's very Linux uh, Red Hat HA and so forth. The problem is that those techniques rely upon standard enterprise networking, which is layer two. So the minute you bring those techniques out to the public cloud, they don't work. Yeah. So the reason, w once you have a solution that supports layer two networking in the public cloud, you can drag into the public cloud all of those very familiar, tried and true um, high availability techniques. So uh, with that, we can demonstrate uh, clustered, um, uh, clustered databases uh, that fail over when a machine um, uh, fails and will just take over its network IP address. So this is something that enterprises do inside the data center, you know, every day, twice on Sunday. It's all meat and potatoes kind of stuff. Yeah. Out in the public cloud, you have to have the rocks, you know, the rock star figure out all sorts of new HA high availability failover techniques. That's good if you've got a rock star working for you. But what you can do with a virtual private cloud that supports these network connectivity capabilities, we can drag all that stuff right into the public cloud. Interesting. Does this make uh, the system uh, more resilient against security attacks as well? And, and do you have any capabilities that you know, let you detect a hacker trying to break into the, the virtual cloud? Because I know a lot of companies are still freaked out about <coughs> cloud outside yes. of their own data centers because they can't 
yes. watch it? That's a, that's, a, that's a great question. And getting back to <coughs> my first point about what a virtual private cloud is. Virtual private cloud is your private section of the public cloud. And what that means is that it's secure and isolated from all from the public internet. And that's what our solution does as well. And, and, and we have built in a, a feature that we call cloud cloaking. And what cloud cloaking is, is it takes the machine that's in the public internet. And since we built this virtual network on top of it, all the communications comes through that private IP address. So what cloaking means is that it will prevent all traffic coming in from any other source. So essentially, this um, renders those systems in the public cloud invisible. So quite literally, if you tried to ping it or do an SSH connection to it, it would just drop the packets and it would, it would not respond. So in that sense, it, it, uh, it uh, reduces the, the uh, attack surface area of, of your public cloud. Yeah. And um, so, now, we, are, we don't provide firewalling and intrusion detection and all these other security functions. We just provide the cloaking environment, and then within that private network, you can attach your checkpoint firewall or your, your IDS solution or other you know, familiar enterprise uh, security solutions. And importantly, once you were able to extend your enterprise network out to the public cloud, you can extend all these security policies that you've already built and paid for and administer and just extend those policies into the public cloud. So we enable that by allowing by by bridging that network seamlessly into the public cloud, and and then one other point that the, the connections between the systems that use vSIDAR are encrypted. So think of think of the network, uh, the vSIDAR network as you know a a cable. You know think about it, think of it a little like a cable in the cloud. It's sort of mind bending, but the fact that we can control the traffic where it goes and isolate it and secure it from the public public you know uh, scrutiny or or uh, snoop, snoopy uh, neighbors. Is, uh, is an important part of what we do. Yeah. It's really interesting stuff. We so, think so. We love it. How, how did you get into this? Uh, well, so I mentioned earlier, I was the founder uh, of a, um, a networking software company called Resonate in the dot-com days. And we built a server load balancing solution. And today, server load balancing is used by every website today. And uh, we were pretty successful in those days. And uh, we, me and my co-founders learned you know, how to you know, build software that's high performance, that lives inside the operating system kernel, that can crack open the packets, process them, and send them back on their way at sort of wire and line speed. So that was sort of our expertise and sort of what we had done in the past. What we recognized was, getting back to my earlier point, cloud networking stinks. Yeah. By any traditional definition, it's really primitive. It's insecure. It's unmanageable. So we said, we got to be able to find a way to solve that. So we took some of the expertise that we had developed over our careers, and we're bringing it to bear to solve some of these problems in the public cloud. That's cool. How, how are, you, are you funded, or how did you we're, guys go? We're, we're angel funded so far. Uh, we are actually uh, looking for venture capital right now, so uh, we're looking to uh, take, uh, take grow the company to the next step. We've got hundreds of accounts paying customers right now. So far, so good. Very cool. Where do I learn more about it? vsider.com, www.vcider.com. Where did you get that name, by the way? Ah, well, networking nerds will recognize the term CIDR block, C-I-D-R, as the classless interdomain routing standard. And since we provide a virtual network in the public cloud, these are virtual CIDR blocks. Therefore, the name of the company, vsider. Very cool. Very few people know that, but hopefully now everyone will. Thank you so much for coming out and talking to me about private clouds. My pleasure. Thank you.